Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video I will be talking about the state of Frost and Unholy DK going into the next raid, which is a battle for the Tsar Allure. During my stream this past weekend, during the weekly workshop, I actually ended up making a BIS Azerite list for both Frost and Unholy for the upcoming raid. And during this time, it kind of made me think a little bit about how each spec will perform in the next raid, what really the benefits of each spec are, what are its downsides, and how I'm expecting everything to play out. First of all, if you want access to that spreadsheet that I made with the BIS Azerite pieces, or any of the information that I will be putting together for the next raid, such as talent builds, little boss tips and tricks, strategies, all of that will be available in my Discord, which you can join if you click the link in the description box. So before we talk about uh, BOD, let's talk a little bit about how Frost and Unholy did in Uldir, because that way we can set a baseline and compare it to the next raid. Frost DK performed extremely well in Uldir, and I think it really surpassed a lot of people's expectations, especially mine. Back when I made my prediction video about which spec will be better for Uldir, if I remember correctly, I predicted that Unholy DK will be better. But there are quite a few things that I didn't take into consideration at that time. At that time, the BOS build was almost unplayable uh, because there were some issues with it. And there's a few things especially when it comes to boss design that I didn't consider. So old year boss design very heavily catered towards Frost DK because with the BOS build, Frost DK is extremely good at one thing, which is limited duration multi-target cleave. So what that means is if you think of a boss like Vectis or even better, if you think of a boss like Mithrax, you have an ad that spawns on the during the boss fight and you have to kill that ad in a limited amount of time because if it gets to an X amount of time, so in case of the Mithrax ad, if it gets like a third cast or in case of a Vectis ad, again, if it gets a second cast, then you're in a big trouble on progress. So with all of our cooldowns going in Breath of Syndragosa, we're able to get very effective damage on both the ad and the boss. And that put Frost DK in a very, very good position because on Mythic, it was able to always do very effective damage. Even on bosses like Fetid, if you think about it, you were always assigned to the big ad. And the boss always got moved to the big ad, so you were essentially cleaving two targets whenever you had your cooldowns. And that was extremely beneficial for Frost DK. And if we look at all of the fights in Uldir, they had some sort of ad spawn during which you use your cooldowns. So you're always able to cleave multiple targets with your cooldowns, and they're really catered towards Frost DK. Now, another thing that really boosted Frost DK's damage, in my opinion, was the reorigination array. They gave you secondary stats. For Frost DK, Mastery is very heavily valued compared to our other secondary stats. And this is not the case for most of the melee DPS. The difference between your best secondary stat and your second best is usually not that big. On Frost DK, that gap is huge. So getting a 750 stat boost to our best secondary was absolutely massive for Frost DK. So on Holy DK, um, most of the people who played it in the first few weeks of the expansion noticed its flaws very, very quickly. And on Holy DK was looking like a very promising spec until you got to single target with it. So most people were playing this spec in dungeons and it was performing quite well. The longer, especially the higher amount of ads you had, the bigger pulls you did, the better on Holy DK was performing. But then you got to a boss and you very quickly noticed that if the boss fight took longer than a few minutes, uh, which early on this wasn't the case because obviously you just did mythic zeros and you just nuked down the bosses. But then once you got to mythic plus, for example, some of those tyrannical bosses would live a little longer. And you notice that even though you did a good burst of damage at the beginning, you would very quickly taper off. And that is a huge issue for Mythic Raiding. Because on Mythic Progress, your boss damage is always going to be relevant. Even when there's ads spawning, you need to be able to keep up some sort of boss damage in most cases. Just to be able to push the boss to the next phase or to kill the boss quicker. And on Holy DK also lacks the tools to quickly be able to swap targets. Um, obviously you need to set up all your damage because you need to build up your wounds on the boss, for example. And then once the ads spawn, then you're able to cleave. 
but if something is not stacked then your cleave gets reduced significantly but even with that unholy dk still excels at cleave if you think of bosses like zul or Gahoon, you still see frost dk or unholy dk's rather parse on those fights but then if you look at their damage breakdown most of the damage will be on the adds rather than on the boss and that's okay if you're trying to parse and just doing good overall numbers but it's not really that beneficial if you think about it in terms of mythic progress where you need to do effective damage rather just da than just damage overall. So looking towards BOD, first of all, let's look at the Azerite items and how they're going to play out for each of the specs. So for Frost DK, they, this recent patch, they obviously removed our Glacial Contagion, which was considered kind of the, the best single target trait. Um, as far as Frost Decay specific trade goes. And they replaced it with Frost Whelp's Indignation, which is by no stretch of the imagination a raiding or a mythic trait. And this really hindered Frost Decay a little bit, um, so I got really discouraged when I was looking at the traits in the next raid, because all of the traits either revolve around Frost Strike, or we have one trait, uh, which is Icy Citadel, that is kind of a hybrid trait. So the way Azerite traits work, in my mind, there's basically three types of Azerite traits. There's pure single target traits, like the Frost Strike one. There's pure AoE traits, like Frozen Tempest. And then there's hybrid traits, like Icy Citadel. Hybrid traits in Mythic Raiding will always be more beneficial than pure single target or pure AoE traits. This is because they will help you on both boss damage and add damage. If you think of a trait like the Frost Strike trait, when you swap off the boss and you're just hitting the add, you're not gaining any benefit from that trait on the boss. However, if you look at a trait like Icy Citadel, or on the counterpart of Unholy, the trait is called Fester Might, then you realize that that trait will benefit you on both targets. Because the trait simply increases the amount of damage that you do, rather than increasing the damage of one specific spell. So Icy Citadel, the way it works, after your Pillar of Frost runs out, you get an amount of strength that lasts um, a limited duration of time based on the amount of obliterates you got during Pillar of Frost. And then Fester Might, the way it works, whenever you burst a boil on the boss or on your target, you will gain a stack of Fester Might. And this stack has a limited duration. So once you proc the first stack of Fester Might, the timer will keep ticking down. Then once it gets to zero, you can start building them again. So you're really aiming at building as many stacks as you can within that limited duration. Now for Frost DK, the Icy Citadel trait, in my opinion, is not designed very well. Even though it is looking like this will be our best uh, DPS trait going into the next raid. The reason why I don't like the way it's designed is, if you think about the way Frost DK damage works, we want to stack all of our cooldowns together. That's why Frost Decay is so good. If you think about your Frostworm's Fury, your Cold Heart, your Breath of Syndragosa, all of those you want to have within your Pillar of Frost and ideally towards the end of your Pillar of Frost. Obviously with Breath of Syndragosa it lasts a long time so you have it throughout, but with Cold Heart and Frostworm you want to pop those at the end because that's where you have everything stacked together, right? You have on use trinkets, uh, which again, that's why they're so good for Frost DK because we're able to stack all these cooldowns on top of each other. So you have unused trinkets, you have your Pillar of Frost multiplier, um, you get your Unholy Strength multiplier, and all of these add up and they add up to being a huge amount of strength boost and damage boost to your character. But then after those run out, you get your Icy Citadel. And the best thing you can hope for with Icy Citadel is that you get a Fallen Crusader proc during your Icy Citadel. There's no other synergy between that uh, Azerite trait and the way the entirety of the Frost DK toolkit works. So you will still get the Icy Citadel strength bonus for the last few seconds of your Breath of Syndragosa, but it will not be nearly as effective as if uh, that trait kind of fell within our Pillar of Frost. BOD also introduced three raid-specific traits. The first one is Seductive Power, and this was bugged while testing. Um, I tried to kind of test the range on it and see how often it procced, but it just never worked. The way in theory it works is that one Sunday will spawn somewhere in the room while you're hitting the target, 
And if you go to him, you get stacks of your main stat. And then if he spawns and you fail to go to him, then you lose some of those stacks. So in theory, depending on how they program this, this could be a good or bad trait. So if the spawn radius of Bonsandi is pretty small and you don't really have to move too far to get those stacks, then this trait will be okay as long as they buff the amount of uh, main stat you get from it because currently I'm pretty sure it's kind of under budgeted compared to some of the other traits. So in mythic raiding, um, especially on some of the harder bosses, as a melee DPS your position will more often than not be locked in. And what that means is that you can't just freely move around the room. Some of the room will be cut off by the range being there with debuffs or the tanks being there. And you will have very limited amount of space to move. And this was very much the case in Uldir. So if Bonsandi is able to spawn far from you, then in some cases you might not be able to make it over to him because there's another mechanic that needs to be dealt with or you're simply cut off from that side of the room. So depending again on how, this, how they program this and how it actually ends up working out, this could be a good trait or it could be just a subpar trait. The second trait here, which I actually quite like the way they designed it, is Treacherous Covenant. Now this trait is very similar to a trinket that we had back in Legion during TOS. And this trinket gave you main stat whenever you were above a certain health threshold. And if you drop below that, then you lost the main stat benefit from it. So it was just essentially a stat stick with half the stats on it. So in theory, this sounds very good for farm fights where you don't take much damage or early mythic progress fights where typically there's not that much damage going out. And this trait also punishes you if you fall below 20% HP because you will take extra damage if you're below 20%. So again, it's a very, very risky trait um, because if you're sub 50%, you don't get the benefit of the stats. And if you're sub 20, you're actually taking more damage. So this trait, the design is very interesting and I wish they did more things like this, which reward you for good gameplay and kind of punish you if you mess up. So if you think about what this trait is actually doing, it's incentivizing players to play safe, use defensive cooldowns, use health stones, just to stay above that 50% health mark, right? Because you always want to preserve your stats that you get from this trait. If you fall below that 50% threshold, it's basically like you're not running any Azerite traits in that slot. Um, so this will be very interesting and it will also be impacted by boss design. If there's boss that nukes you down to 20% HP, um, and we saw this in the past where bosses will just do a massive AoE and you go heal through it with healing cooldowns, but it will still nuke you down to pretty low HP, uh, this trait will not be that beneficial. Where on the other hand, if you have a boss that just does current like constant ticking damage, and even though your health is constantly fluctuating, you're not dropping below that 50% mark, this trait will be much better. The third trait here is Bonded Souls. Now this is a hybrid healing trait that links you to another player, heals both of you, and gives both of you haste. Um, I realize that it's supposed to be a defensive trait, but they essentially put a defensive trait that heals you into your DPS ring. And as a Frost Decay especially, it gives you haste, so that part of the trait you can completely ignore. As a Frost Decay, you can simply read this trait as it links you to another player and it heals you. Unless you're very, very behind on healing and your healers are struggling very much, you're not going to be running this trait in any situation. First of all, it's for a Frost Decay, it's purely healing trait. And second of all, it gives you haste. So for Unholy, it might be okay, but it gives you a very, very low amount of haste. Um, at 415 eye level, I think it was something like 250 haste. The way they could improve this trait, in my opinion, is change it so it gives you secondary stat based on your highest secondary, much like the array did in Uldir. Moving on to Trinkets, um, actually moving on to Unholy. Now, Unholy Azerite traits will work out quite differently in the next trait than they did in Uldir. First of all, we can stack Triple Festermite. In Uldir, you were limited on this because obviously you had to run one archive, and in most situations, people ran at least two archives in Old Deer. In the next raid, you can always stack triple, triple Fester Might. And on top of the Triple Fester Might, you can also get other AoE traits um, to kind of help you with those add phases and AoE cleave. 
So I still, I'm still expecting Unholy to be a very good spec for multi-target cleaving that's sustained and big AoE. But in my opinion, it still falls behind on boss damage. The only way we would actually see Unholy DK kind of surpass Frost, in my opinion, is if we saw the rise of a single target spec. Because it feels like as an Unholy DK, you're very much locked into an AoE and a cleave spec. Even if you think you're running a single target spec, if you look at all of the talents, the way you set up your Azerite traits and everything, it will very much so cater towards AoE and cleave. The single target build, if you think about it, would be a gargoyle build. But currently that is too undertuned to be competitive with a Frost BOS build. So I very much so like to see the rise of a single target build to kind of propel Unholy a little bit this next raid. Now don't get me wrong, I definitely think that the gap between Unholy and Frost will close next raid. Um, so the two specs will be closer together in terms of damage. But that is in big part fro of Frost DK actually getting worse as well as Unholy getting slightly better. As far as trinkets go in the next raid, again, it's a very weird design. We have one trinket that gives you haste, and this haste ramps up over time. Um, it's an unused trinket. So again, it gives haste, so it's not going to be good for frost. It might be good for unholy with certain builds. Uh, the second trinket is from Grong, which basically does damage, but it incapacitates you for 4 seconds while you do the damage. And for frost, again, this is very counterproductive, because ideally you'd want to use this trinket during your Pillar of Frost. Um, but during Pillar of Frost, your Breath of Syndra Ghosts are rolling, so you can't afford the 4 seconds to become incapacitated. If it, goes, if it does good damage, then it might be okay for Unholy, but I doubt many people will play this trinket on DKs. The third trinket, which in my opinion is the only trinket that's going to see gameplay um, on Frost DK, is the Jaina Dot Trinket. Now, if they tune this correctly, this will most likely see gameplay on both Frost and Unholy, but essentially what it does is it applies a dot to your target and it stacks up, if I remember correctly, to 5 times. The nice thing about this trinket is the way it's designed, the dots get applied by melee attacks. So as a frost DK, if you're cleaving and you're using frost sight, you're actually going to be applying that dot to every target that's gotten hit by frost sight. So that's a nice interaction there. But as far as the second trinket, I'm pretty sure frost DKs will still run either a mythic plus on use trinket or a PvP on use trinket. Um, so from the raid, I'm very much expecting only the Jaina Trinket to see any use on Frost DK. On Unholy DK, we might see the Haste one being used, but from what I saw on the PTR, it was not all that great of a Trinket. I've been rambling on for a while, and just to kind of recap everything, in the next raid, I'm expecting Frost DK to be a little bit lower on the ladder of melee DPS than it was in Old Year, and I'm expecting Unholy to be a little bit higher. But when we compare Frost to Unholy, I still think that Frost DK will be the go-to for most cases and most bosses. There might be a few bosses where you will play Unholy depending on um, the number of targets you can hit and all of that sort of thing. But for the majority of the raid, I'm still expecting Frost to be outperforming Unholy, even if it's not by a huge margin. As far as the Azerite items go, on Frost DK, all three of our best in slot items are from the raid. Whereas on the other hand, for Unholy, we have two best in slot from Dungeon and one from the Raid. So again, this kind of plays a little bit in favor of Frost, in my opinion, because getting uh, those Raid pieces might be a little bit easier since you can clear it on multiple difficulties, whereas an Unholy DK, you kind of have to be looking to getting those traits and those pieces from Mythic Plus, so through the Residuum system. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you enjoyed it please hit the like button and sub to the channel. If you'd like to chat about any of these things leave a comment down below or join my discord where you can chat with me directly and I look forward to seeing all your questions, all your input and everything like that. Again thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.